The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome once again to our doctrinal Bible study of the Vic Balbidu Evangelistic Ministry. Now you know that this is on a daily basis that we do study God's Word. And so, without much ado, I presume that you as a believer has already used the principle of 1 John 1.9, and for you unbeliever, it is faith alone, in Christ alone. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with all humility, with all reverence and awe, we now pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you make the uh, topic we are going to take up, the biggest spiritual problem of man, so vivid to us. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, where we stop uh, yesterday on the biggest spiritual problem of man. I guess we can finish this study today. Okay. Now, the things that we have been taking up, what we are talking about, come or are derived from several principles of the Bible which need to be interpret or interpreted and once they are properly interpreted and explained and understood, the students of the Bible class use their volition either to accept them or to reject them. Hence, it is a matter of choice. So we have studied and learned that God created, set up, established a plan. A plan which is perfect. A plan intended for man. A plan where its object is man himself. Because, as we know, the biggest spiritual problem of man is his separated condition from God. Now, again, remember that God's plan is perfect because God is perfect. So since God is perfect, his plan is perfect. Now you notice that we keep repeating to say this truth. Now it needs to be repeated because this is a very significant and profound point of doctrine for us believers to sink in in our cardia. Now please note this very well, that we believers are very much involved in the angelic conflict. In simple terms, this conflict is the spiritual warfare which started right at the moment we got saved. We knew from Bible doctrine that the very reason God created us and put us in this world is for us to function in our role in resolving this angelic conflict. That's why we thought on this subject. So we will be reminded that this warfare between the forces of Satan and the forces of God is very much alive. And we believers are given the role to resolve this conflict in order for God to prove and to show to Satan that he is a defeated enemy and God is the winner. Now may I ask you, fellow believer, do you know this doctrine? Or are you aware of our role as believers? Now as we reverse concentrate or recall this particular doctrine, this conflict all started when Lucifer, Satan's original name before he became arrogant and defied God's character. He challenged God 
by questioning God's fairness. So, Lucifer, now turned Satan the devil, was driven away by God from heaven because of Lucifer's pride. Pride or arrogance then was Satan's main transgression against God. The sin of pride, therefore, is a deadly kind of sin that God is mandating us believers to beware of. So there goes another technical word, angelic conflict. Let's be reminded then of that. Therefore, going back to God's plan, it is very tragic to see nowadays that there are so many people who do not believe God or who do not believe in the existence of God. I have said this before and I'll say it again. If you do not believe in God, or you don't believe in the existence of God, that doesn't change God. Why? Because God's existence, His being God, can never ever fade or nullify His being God. He exists forever. Understand that. Absolutely no one can change, can alter God. Malachi 3.6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. So to you who are listening to this Bible study right now, if you don't believe that God exists, listen. Do you know the reason why you are here in this world? Why you are still breathing? Why you are still alive? Do you know why? You're going to die after your life on earth is finished? Is this all there is to life? That after you die, that's it? You will go out of existence? Or do you know that there is a reason why you are here and you are still alive? Do you know these things? We're asking you that you're made alive right now only to die and to be buried? No, you might philosophize by answering us, well, I will just try my best to live well, but how? Well, I'll do my best to struggle in life. Oh, good luck to you if that's your philosophy, because you know very well how hard life is. Worst if you don't believe that there is God. But get this. There is a reason, there is a purpose for your being here in this life. That's why we are studying the Bible to know, to learn all the things that concern the exigencies of life. Most important of all, to know and to learn who and what God is. To know and learn His plan for our life. And to be able to live a life of purpose, meaning it with definition. In short, to be able to live a life well lived. And when we exit from this present life, we come face to face with our Creator and later be able to hear that famous accolade, well done, good and faithful servant. So, to those who have not established a relationship with God by resisting God's perfect means, which is simply by believing in Christ as Savior, these people cannot actually claim to call God their Father. And thus, God has nothing to do with them. That's really a sad truth. So therefore, in order for man to learn and know who God is, it's necessary for him to study God's Word. So as he continues to do so, he eventually will be enlightened. In fact, it is the Holy Spirit who will enlighten him, convict him of his sins, his unrighteousness, and of the unpardonable sin. And if he uses the positive ball of his volition by realizing he needs a Savior, he believes in Christ as a Savior, and he gets saved instantaneously. He, at that moment he got saved, he was using his faith now energized, enlivened, and activated towards the right object for salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as a new believer, a child of God, member of the right or royal family of God, 
he instantly is given by God the right to call God his father. Did you understand that? Right after he, the new believer, got saved, his faith is directed now to the next object of that faith, which is the word of God. He is to follow the mandate of God in 2 Peter 3.18, which says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, how to do it? By studying the Word of God every day. That's the reason why God made that believer alive, so he can prepare his soul to grow up spiritually before God takes him home in heaven. This is what we call phase two life of every believer while on earth. Because when his life here in this world is over, God's plan for his life is finished. Then he is promoted to phase three in the eternal state. This is our uh, finishing point of this study. The biggest spiritual problem of man. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this precious time to commune with you by assimilating your word. This is our daily routine as believers in obedience to your mandate in 2 Peter 3.18 that you want us to take in your word so our soul can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thus, reach our goal, which is spiritual maturity, the stage where we have the capacity for life, for blessings, for love. We now pray that God the Holy Spirit will enlighten us, challenge and motivate us to these things that we have taken up. This we ask. In Christ's precious name. Amen.